grace, peace, and mercy from God who was, who is, and who is yet to come. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to be here worshiping with you and online. If we have not met yet, my name is Rita Argus, and I am the new intern pastor here at Bethany. And I'm excited to learn and grow with you all over the next two years. A funny thing happened the other day. My Black Lab Jelly Bean and I went on our first hiking adventure in the mountains, and as we were hiking up, Jelly Bean, of course, bounding along because she's an energetic puppy, and me breathing hard because I'm still adjusting to the altitude. Uh, but as we were hiking up, nonetheless, the hiking path opened to reveal a view of mountains fit for a postcard or an Instagram post or a Bob Ross painting. At that moment, the only thought that crossed my mind was, oh my goodness, I live in Colorado. As if I could forget my three-day journey across the U.S. to get here. As if I could forget changing my address on an endless number of forms to Denver, Colorado. As if I could forget driving towards the at least a little bit visible through the smoke mountains every day on my way to work. Yet, in that moment, the fact that, yes, I live in Colorado became very real. Isn't it funny how pieces of our identity can be tied to locations or physical reminders? And when we leave that location, that piece of our identity, it's still with us, still a part of us, but that piece fades into the background noise of everything else going on and becomes almost inconsequential. It's almost as, we, as if we forget that piece of our identity. As this is the last week in our sermon series on the theme of God's mercy, using the Kyrie we sang at the beginning of worship as a guide, I was struck when reflecting on the final verse of the Kyrie, which again reads as, For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word, that you nourish our souls with your body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. I was struck by how often we tie our identity as baptized Christians, as called and claimed children of God, to the physical church building. With physical reminders such as this worship space or the baptismal font or joining together in a thanksgiving for baptism or a real live baptism like we're going to have today, with these physical reminders, it can be easy in this space to remember that we, too, are baptized. But once we leave this space, once we walk out the doors, it can be easy to let that piece of our identity fade into the background noise of everything else demanding our attention. And I am right there with you. I can't tell you how many times I have left church on a Sunday morning feeling great, gotten into my car to drive home, pulled out onto the road, only to have someone cut me off. Which leads to me, out of frustration, letting out a string of words that I cannot, will not, and will never repeat here. <laughs> I know I'm better than that. I know the person cursing out the other driver is not who I normally am. But out there in the world, without the physical and visual reminders from this space, it can be easy to forget and to get lost and to fall short of who we are called to be. We forget we are baptized. Yet God has mercy on us. God forgives us. And God still loves us. Friends, this is amazing, so much so that the reality of how amazing God's mercy is can be hard to quantify or wrap your head around. So to put God's mercy into perspective, let me tell you a story. In 1994, the country of Rwanda was torn apart by genocide. 
In a hundred days, almost a million people were killed. Maybe you're familiar with this history and maybe not, but all you need to know today is that most of these killings were not done by armies or militias. They were done by other family members and other community members, meaning that families were ripped apart, neighbors were pitted against neighbors, and communities were broken. This is where our story starts. Because you see, in the desire to offer mercy and forgiveness in hopes of reconciliation between the survivor communities and the criminals who carried out the genocide, the vast majority of criminals were not tried and sentenced by traditional courts as we would imagine them. Instead, the criminals confessed and asked for forgiveness during special village courts. The communities of survivors then forgave the criminals and welcomed them back into the community. Let me say that again. The survivors of the genocide forgave the criminals and welcomed them back into the communities. Beloved, while this is an amazingly incredible act of human forgiveness, God forgives us all even more. God's forgiveness is not bound like human forgiveness by conditions or exceptions. There's no dotted line to sign or small print to read for this forgiveness. We are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Or in other words, we are free to be who we were made to be. No longer do we have to live in fear of sin and death, but instead we get to walk in newness of life. Friends, God forgives us. God has mercy on us. So washed in God's mercy, we are called to be who we are. Baptized into Christ, we are with Christ in all things. We are invited out into the world, bearing Christ's name and showing God's love for the world. A few years ago, I traveled to Germany with my family, and one of the places we visited was the church where Martin Luther was baptized. The modern-day baptismal font is set within the floor at the front of the sanctuary, and carved around the font are concentric circles that represent the ripples of the baptismal waters flowing out from the font. The ripples progressively work their way through the church, up the walls and windows, and even out the front door and spill into the street, calling people as they exit the church to remember and live out their baptism in the world beyond the walls of the church building. My friends, when we leave here and remember our baptism, it's not so much that we remember the date and the time and who baptized us, we instead are invited to remember who we are in the world beyond these walls. We are invited to remember that we are called and claimed children of God, called forth to show mercy, love, and forgiveness as we have been shown by God to our neighbors, no matter who that might be. And yes, it's inevitable. We are going to forget. We are going to mess up. We are going to fall short on offering mercy and love to our neighbors. But friends, God is giving us the freedom to not be afraid when we forget and mess up. We are given the freedom to be who we were made to be so that we can in confidence follow our calling of showing the world the love of Jesus. Amen.